here we go what up guys clip beats no script off the rip my mic is acted up like crazy the last video that i did is gonna sound like bruh, 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 bruh. i feel so bad i'm so sorry we got ricky gervais out of england the stand-up special of 2008 um this was a paid for donation by my friend alex over here uh thank you so much alex i appreciate you i told you i got you i told you now listen this is one hour and 12 minutes and 48 seconds long anybody who's familiar with uploading videos this is way too long to do in one take i'm probably gonna have to break it up in four or five pieces so uh bear with me let's have a good time do me a favor go to ricky gervais's original channel throw him a like go subscribe i'm probably gonna have to block out the video due to youtube issues and i did hear from alex uh we discussed the video a little bit beforehand that there are some issues because hbo and stuff so i'm gonna try my best but don't be surprised if the videos blurred out or you know whatever it got words over it bear with me it's not my fault blame youtube get your t get your uh pitchforks go after youtube get away from me <laughs> i love you guys let's go it's good to be back and if the mic is bothering you in any way please let me know so i, I can try to adjust and now for the main event of the evening that's what my last mic sounded like. Oh, my last video. Earl Jones? The most successful British comedy of all time, showed in over 100 countries. He holds the world record for internet downloads and has sold over 7 million DVDs. He has won two prime time Emmys, three Golden Globes, and eight BAFTAs, and now has the fastest selling live tour in British history. So, please welcome to the stage, all the way from London, the Podfather, the phenomenon that is the English King of Comedy, Ricky Jarvis! <laughs> this man came out Travis the King. This is my first time seeing an actual full stand-up routine, by the way. I'll break it your face. I just caught that he was going with the lyrics, one heart, one soul, and he points to the soul of his shoe. Thank you. Thank you so much. Not too over the top, is it? <laughs> Spend the entire budget on that. Just me and a microphone now. Look, not even a co -op. Unbelievable. Oh, <laughs> it is fantastic to be here in the greatest city in the world. Thank you so much. Oh, this is my, um, it's my second night in New York. I did uh, a few gigs in uh, Los Angeles, but uh, a lot of those, we donated the money to the um, uh, American Cancer Society. So this is better because I keep all the money. <laughs> so, so, uh, but we did raise thousands of dollars or hundreds of pounds, whichever way. <laughs> What's it like being a third world country? Oh dear. I know what you're thinking straight away. Ricky Gervais, are you still doing stuff for charity? Shut up. No, don't. But, what? I do too much. No, I don't. Do what? How much did I raise for cancer alone last year? It doesn't matter. Why is it? What? Give us a ballpark figure. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> Millions. And they are welcome to it. But I will say this, if I ever get cancer myself, I'm going to walk into the nearest hospital and go, right, I paid for that machine. <laughs> get that little bald fucker off it. <laughs> Talking of little bald fuckers, I did the teenage cancer gig last year. It... We're, we're, we're... <laughs> bald little fuck, we're starting off with this? Oh no. Little bald fuckers, I did the teenage cancer gig last year. It... <laughs> What? At the uh, Royal Albert Hall. I did it before. I did it in 2006. 
but they called again um, last year. We're still ill. Okay. Um, <laughs> you lasted. <laughs> um, no, it's a great gig, um, and the, the teenagers with cancer getting free and everything. That's the sort of guy I am. And um, they sit in the front row. Oh, lucky little. And uh, <laughs> they get to come backstage afterwards and meet me. What a treat that is for, for them. So much better than going to Disney World, where the rides can make you sick if you're in that state. So meeting me, it's thumbs up. So, and I was doing the gig this last time, and uh, I looked down and I recognised one of them. I thought, oh yeah, he came backstage two years ago. He was telling me about his illness, and I signed some stuff for him, and he said, oh, he just turned 18 and how hard it was. And I was thinking, well, that was two years ago. So now he must be 20. So how the fuck is he still a teenager? <laughs> Lying little shit. He wasn't lying about the cancer, he was riddled with it. It hurt him to laugh, but he shouldn't... <laughs> so I was doing the gig, and he was laughing along, and I thought, yeah, you laugh it up, mate. I was fuming. <laughs> and he got too much for me, and I went, all right, mate, I recognise you. He went, uh, you came backstage two years ago, he went, yeah, yeah. He said, you're 18. He went, yeah, so you're 20 now. He went, yeah, I said, get out. <laughs> and I called security, and they... He struggled, but he was weak. They worked out, you could tell. They... <laughs> Although they had trouble getting hold of him to start with, but then they, they got him and they... they pulled so it. His drip nearly had someone's eye out. Uh, I went, get him out. The crowd started booing. I went, hear that? They don't want to see someone like you take the piss out of me. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know what I love the most is somebody's going to take that joke completely wrong. <laughs> It's all, but it's always somebody <laughs> just, just not, does not catch dry humor or just sarcasm. You know what I'm saying? And I'll get the, I'll, I'll get the hate. Ricky's fine. I'll get the hate for it because I'm just watching it. Cheers, everyone. That's a big can, isn't it? I'm not showing off. I want you to know that is a big can, and I'm not a dwarf. From the that's funny you said that because I've seen a clip of something and he was holding the same kind of can. I was like, that can is fucking huge, dude. He picked it up with two hands at one point. <laughs> oh, I did a big um, charity gig last year for autism. And like most people, my only experience of autism until recently was Dustin Hoffman's brilliant portrayal in Rain Man. But I've just got this new house in London, and the neighbours were coming round going, oh, yeah, hi, poking their noses in, basically. But I thought, you know, I'd be nice to them for now. When I get a big gate, they can fuck off. Um, <laughs> and uh, one couple, they've got an autistic son. And the mother was talking to me and said, oh, this is Douglas, he's 17, and he never goes out because he hasn't got any friends. So I thought, right, okay, this is where I can show him that, you know, I'm a rich, handsome man off the telly, but I've also got a heart of gold. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'll take him out. I went, really? I went, yeah. So I went back on the Saturday, true, um, and uh, she said, oh, he loves the zoo. And the zoo is only about a mile from my new house in Hampstead, I live. And uh, so I'm walking along the street, with Douglas, okay, and he doesn't take his eyes off his mum all the way along, all the way along the street like that. And his mum's in the doorway, and she's waving to him, and she's crying, right? Eventually she shuts the door and she goes indoors. I hailed a cab and said, right, take us to the casino. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've got to make it work for you, haven't you? So, <clears throat> I signed him in, he had a little suit on and everything, I thought, this is going to be brilliant. Okay, I went straight to the blackjack table. That's their best one. I don't know why. There's, they're, they're brilliant at that. Um, I went. I just caught on. So he's had a call back to the Dustin Hoffman. You'd have to know the movie where he's autistic. It's. I, I feel like I'm explaining an old movie. Maybe you've never seen it. His brother's autistic, but he's actually a mathematical genius. He can count cards and win a bunch of money in gambling. So he just assumed he could take him and go make a bunch of money. They're, they're brilliant at that. Um, I went, okay, Doug, you know the score. <laughs> Bet two for good and one for bad. Do you understand? He went, yeah. I went, oh, oh, oh. So I was, I was betting, I was about a thousand pounds down in half an hour. And I went, sorry, hold on, Douglas, do that thing, count the cards, do that thing. 
tell me when there's a good card coming, tell me about two for good. Do you understand? He went, yeah. So I was going, another thousand pounds down. I thought, what sort of an autistic... So, I... <laughs> I was confused. I threw some toothpicks on the carpet. I said, how many went? I don't know. I said, the seven. I can see the seven from here. <laughs> oh. That's from the movie. The guy drops a bunch of, uh, I think it was matches, if I'm not mistaken. Toothpicks are matches. And he's able to count, like, whatever, 100 or 200 in the matter of a split second. So he's trying to do this to him like he, they did the Dustin Hoffman in the movie. <laughs> wow. Why did I get that one? So I took him back home and I said to the mother, there's been a mistake. <laughs> he walks like Rain Man, but he's got none of that clever shit. <sighs> I know it's wrong. But I don't want to talk about it, but I do do an awful lot for charity. Um, but I think some causes are more worthy than others. Joking aside, obviously cancer is a very worthy cause, autism is a very worthy cause. But I got asked to do a benefit gig recently for sufferers of obesity. Well... <laughs> she went, sufferers of obesity. I went, do you mean fat people? <laughs> she went, no, because obesity is... Well, she actually went, no, because she was eating. She went, she went no, just, you know, between... Snacks, right. And uh, she went, obesity is a disease. <laughs> no, it's not, is it? No. You just like eating, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, is it? <laughs> How is that a disease? Oh, I'm so fucking ill. Oh, 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 I'm well ill. I'm well ill. Oh. I said, what's the disease? She went, everything tastes good. <laughs> everything, yeah. Not salads, but... <laughs> it's not a disease, is it? <laughs> Leprosy is a disease. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus in the temple? People shuffling up to him in bandages going, Jesus, my face is falling off. I can't stop now, there's a fat chick on her third pie. <laughs> People say, they make excuses, don't they, fat people? They say, it's glandular. It's not glandular, it's greed, OK? It's big bones. Yeah, big bones covered in meat and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> they <laughs> so many things I want to say, but I'm going to let him say it. They complain, and it's their own fault. Oh, I'm getting fat. Oh, oh look, I'm getting fat. Oh, oh. aeroplane seats. <laughs> They're not big enough for someone like me. No, they're not. Because if they were, we'd only get 12 fucking people on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. It is fair. That's what does it. And if we're talking about fairness and aeroplanes, why is it I get the same luggage allowance as a guy who's 400 pounds? We're both allowed to carry on 32 kilograms to the plane. I want to go, no, he used up his 32 kilograms on his tits. <laughs> it's not a disease. I saw a documentary back in England about this woman who was 350 pounds because she ate 10 burger and fries a day. That'll do it. Oh. Ten separate meals of burger and fries. Ten separate trips to McDonald's, right? In a cab? Oh, didn't even walk that. <laughs> Wasted calories, okay? Yeah. So, to stop her eating these meals, they wired her jaw together. So she liquidised ten burger and fries a day. <laughs> now she's on burger smoothies. Now she's not even chewing. That used up three calories. I... <laughs> so, lo and behold, she gets fatter. That's true, actually, too. When you eat food, uh, I forgot what it is that releases from your chemicals, but your body starts to actually produce chemicals to make sure you don't overeat. <laughs> if you are consuming it through drink, uh, yeah, it's going to get into your bloodstream a lot quicker. You're going to be able to consume more calories, actually. That's why actors who want to put on weight for movies and stuff will like melt down ice cream and just drink like tubs of ice cream. So, they admitted her to have that thing done where you staple your stomach together. And she's sitting there, 
in hospital, looking all depressed. Well, you can't eat for an hour before an operation, can you? <laughs> Lank hair, smock. Christ knows where they got that, right? <laughs> and she said, it's a really dangerous procedure, but it's the only option left. <laughs> <laughs> One, jogging, <laughs> you don't even walk. Right. Uh, salad, you don't like the taste. <laughs> Three, nine burger and fries a day. <laughs> it's a start, isn't it? And like, look, I'm not ragging on people who are have overweight or anything, dude. There was one point in my life where I went through a depression and I, I was drinking nonstop and every night I was inking inking i was i was eating arby's like i mean i would spend like 20 bucks on arby's and i'd eat it right before sleep at one point i, I shot up from like a buck 50 to like 220 pounds within like a month or month and a half and I, one of my friends called me out one day i went out to like some club or some party and i was wearing like this big sweatshirt he was like yo why you come <laughs> why'd you step out with that fat he's like that that fat man sweatshirt and i was like that what that fat man sweatshirt he's like yeah you even got a mustard stain on it i looked down i had a mustard stain it was in one of those big sweatshirts to like hide the weight and like it really hit me that i had to stop so i just stopped going to arby's i stopped eating like that i didn't stop my drinking because i was a full-blown alcoholic at the time but yeah you just have to have some self-discipline it's a start to wear jesus we have uh we have some fat people in Britain, but um, you, like everything else, are, are the gold medalists of that as well, right? <laughs> You'd win that in the Olympics. I saw this episode of Jerry Springer. It was called Jerry Springer Saves the World's Fattest Man. You've got to watch that. No. So he's there going, OK, let's try and save this guy's life. He's got a heart of gold as well. He's like me, right? So. So it cut to this guy at home in his house. They couldn't bring him to the studio. They had a camera crew there. And I say house, he was in a trailer, obviously. And, um. <laughs> oh, he snuck in, obviously. <laughs> he was. He was. He was like a big blob on the bed. He sort of filled the trailer. He looked like an un uncooked souffle. <laughs> and it was. It, to see, like, his eyes in this doughy mess and uh, he was going uh, I don't want to die Jerry I don't want to die and I felt sorry for him I got over that but and I said how much do you weigh and he and he weighed a thousand pounds a thousand pounds now my point is this when he weighed himself one day and he was say 500 pounds didn't he think then that was a lot didn't he go, that's a lot, <laughs> for a human, <laughs> for what is essentially a land mammal, <laughs> that's a lot. I'll only have eight breakfast today. I'm not having a go. I'm not, I'm a little bit overweight myself. The other night someone shouted, no shit. <laughs> I thought it could be that. Play on words there, that was good. Wouldn't that be great? You go to the doctor, he goes, no, you're not overweight, you're just constipated. Woohoo! Start again. Um, I tell you, uh, quickly, I had to go to the doctor um, for, this, for this tour, for this um, medical, I say tour, it's LA and New York, they're the main two, I didn't do the middle bit. Um, Sorry, I'm in Chicago. <laughs> nothing wrong with the middle bit, I, uh, if you're watching the DVD. Um, I love the middle bit. I love the middle bit. I love all of America. I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I do. I've got a film coming out. Now listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had to have a medical. And um, I've had medicals before for TV shows. And they check your pulse and go, fine, you're not going to die in the next six weeks. Go ahead. But went along to Harley Street and he said, oh, it's a bit more thorough than usual because it's, you know, it's a high insurance risk, this big gig. So I went, fine, said, we need a urine sample. I went, yeah, fine. So he gave me this little file, right? And I went to the toilet, filled that up, good as gold, gave it back to him, still warm. 
even that little term right there, good is gold. What color is urine typically? Yellow, gold. But it's just like a play on words to these comedians are so slick with it. Like I said, I compare a lot of it to, you know, it's poetry. It's just the writing is very similar to just when you write lyrics for music as well. So I just, I love it. I love it so much. It's little, little subtle things you got to pay attention to that are beautiful. That up, good as gold. Gave it back to him. Still warm. That's embarrassing, isn't it? You know, there's a temperature strip on it to make sure it's not fake. Oh, I know he's a doctor, it's, but it's wee. But when it's, when it's cold wee, it's sort of just chemical. But when it's, when it's warm wee, it's sort of biological. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's from my body. That is warm because of my body heat. Some of which is probably willy heat. Do you know what I mean? No, <laughs> willy heat. But it is. I'm not, I'm not saying I've got a, a very hot penis, but I'm... No, I, it's the same... To, what I'm saying is it started off as core temperature, but then I had to go through the willy, which, which kept it warm, <laughs> like a lagged pipe. And it was only a very short journey, so it lost... <laughs> it's fine, uh, it's average, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I love how he rips on himself, too. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, I'm five for eight, it's in proportion. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Is that real? He keeps on saying it over and over again like he's not so sure. It is. Absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with this. It. Um, I've got nothing to compare it with. I uh, mine is the only one I've seen. I haven't seen it for a while. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I'd look silly with like a two-foot cock, wouldn't I? <laughs> I'd look ridiculous. It would look ridiculous. Oh, look at my big cock. Well, you look ridiculous. <laughs> you look ridiculous. You were better with the average one. <laughs> Whatever size it is, it looks fine on on me. I don't... Also, if I had a two-foot one, I'd faint every time I got an erection, which would be... <laughs> I'd just be lying there with no blood in me, just this cock. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's... I've never thought about it before, but it's... it's... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, I was good. It really is. I don't... Now I'm worried that you think, oh, why... It's just... I... It's... <laughs> <laughs> if you saw me naked, you wouldn't go, that's the tiniest cock I've ever seen. You <laughs> fucking wouldn't. You wouldn't make... You'd... You'd look, you'd go, as a ma naked man. You, know, well, you wouldn't have to squint. I don't know why I did that. I don't, I don't know why I did that. I, you wouldn't have to squint. You'd go, there's his penis. It's fine. It's fine. And the doctor can't tell you because he's taken an oath. So you'll never find out. Okay. So I gave him the, the wee. Okay. Hot wee. Hot willy wee. <laughs> This is so stupid, but so good. <laughs> from uh, my, just from my bladder and average penis, and he um, he went thanks, right? <sighs> He's loving that. Anyway, so and then he went, oh, um, uh, can you strip down to your underpants? I went, okay, so I stripped down to my under. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> Someone's parrots escaped. <laughs> So he said, can you, can you strip down to your underpants? I went, good as gold. Oh, for f The one day I wear white underpants. Big wet patch from the wee. Uh. Why didn't he warn me? Why didn't he say, be careful, I'll be checking your underpants in a minute. You don't check your underpants, do you? You do that, you put it away. Maybe that always happens, but I've never, I've never had a wee. Then go out and go, better check my underpants. I've never... That's the first time I've ever had a post-wee view of <laughs> so i thought oh how embarrassing he's, he's checking the wee and he's going to turn around any minute and he's going to see what and he did I, he saw it straight away he, he sort of went like that and looked away <laughs> yo tip to any men out there wear black boxer briefs all right wear the color black it's a tip for all men it'll save you and it's also scientifically proven that actually women whoever your sexual partners are, prefer, prefer to see you in black, you know, briefs, underwear in general. And he did, I, he saw it straight away. It's more slimming. He, he sort of went like that and looked away, right? And I tried to hide it. I was one of those pairs that just a slit and I tried to pull it over, but it pinged back and he saw it. He had to touch it when he said cough. It was really embarrassing, okay? <laughs> 
But why am I telling you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, anyway, so that happened. I wet myself, basically, in front of a doctor. OK. I went, I went home and I told my mate, I said, oh, what happened? And my mate said, you should have gone commando. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that would have been much less embarrassing, wouldn't it? So, according to him, I should go, oh, no, I've wet myself. What can I do? Oh, I know. I'll take them off, too. <laughs> That's as dry as a bone dock. Um... <laughs> should have gone commando. Dry as a bone. The commandos not wear pants. <laughs> the com commandos must wear underpants, mustn't they? He was not. <laughs> Why aren't you wearing underpants? <laughs> what? I'm a commander and I'm wearing underpants. <sighs> I've never heard of that. I've never heard that phrase before. <laughs> They're going to see that. <laughs> At least. <laughs> oh, they're definitely going to see it now. Oh. <laughs> There's barbed wire. You're going to lose that. <laughs> Should have gone commando. Thank you. Oh. That was good. <laughs> So he gave him an erection from rubbing the paint at it. I'm a bit overweight myself, but I never worried about it before I was famous. And I'm not vain now. It's that you read about yourself, and the papers, they need an adjective. They can't just say, Ricky Gervais, comedian. They say things like, Ricky Gervais, tubby comedian. <laughs> what? Why say that? Why? Why bring that into it? It's like... You can't get more specific than your entire name. You know what I mean? Uh, who's going, Ricky Gervais? What does he do? Comedian. Ricky Gervais, comedian. Fat bloke. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> One paper called me Rotund Comic. I'm not Rotund, am I? There was a picture in the two English papers this weekend, okay, a paparazzi got me in Los Angeles, and I was just sort of standing like that, and it was in the Daily Mail and the News of the World, and they put a question underneath it, is Ricky pregnant? <laughs> I've been referred to as a chubby funster. That's like a gay porn name, isn't it? A chubby funster? Oh, here comes the chubby funster. A funster? I was jogging once, right, with my iPod on. Yeah, looking good, right? Paparazzi got me, full page in the paper the next day, with a headline, iPodge. <laughs> Cheeky bastards. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, all the charity work I do. I don't want to really talk about it, but I, I do. <laughs> One of the first big charities I got involved with, um, years ago was when I worked at the University of London, was the Terence Higgins Trust, which is the big AIDS. Dude, my face hurts. <laughs> my face hurts right now from smiling. Charity in, um, in Britain. And it was, um, it was sort of mid to late 80s, so people were still like, oh, what's this new thing called AIDS? What's this? Oh, it's gone from strength to strength now. It's doing very well. It's gone global. But got its own day and everything. First of December, World AIDS Day. I don't think it'll ever take off like Christmas, because it's, <laughs> it's got a wrong vibe about it. Um, and the card companies of Mr. Trick, they're usually straight in for anything, aren't they? And you, can, you, can't, you cannot get, sorry, you've got AIDS cards. They don't exist. You're, or one that plays a little tune to cheer someone up, a little relevant tune. I don't know what a relevant tune would be, but... I'm a nine-stone cowboy. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, but... No, I won't do this in San Francisco. Um, I am... Um, <laughs> Because you had a bad gay. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no, but. That was good. I learned a fascinating fact when working for the Terence Higgins Trust. People always. Because you had a bad gay. You had a bad day. But he switched it to gay because he got AIDS. That was good. That was clever. No, but I learned a fascinating fact 
when working for the Terence Higgins Trust. People always learn stuff from my lectures. Um, <laughs> this is absolutely true. The first HIV virus was actually a combination of two separate viruses that joined in rhesus monkeys and made this rudimentary form of AIDS. And this was passed to chimpanzees. Sometimes chimps will get a bloodlust and eat a rhesus monkey and it, it sort of evolved and mutated in chimps. And because we're 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, it was able to be passed to humans. And the first human contracted AIDS when he was chopping up chimp meat and he cut his finger, although that's the excuse I'd have given as well. You'd have to come up with something when you go to the doctor and you go, I feel terrible, doc. And he goes, well, I'm not surprised. You're the first human to contract AIDS. How would I got that? <laughs> Two ways. <laughs> <laughs> One, you were fucking a chimp up the arse. <laughs> Me? <laughs> <laughs> chimp up the arse. <laughs> it's a me. <laughs> no way. <laughs> How else could I have caught it? <laughs> I don't know, you could have been chopping up chimp meat and cut your finger. That one. <laughs> Choppy, chimpy finger thing. I thought he went straight into the jungle and found that chimp. I went, you fucking gave me AIDS. I gave you what? You gave me AIDS. I gave you a blowjob. Shush, shut up. <laughs> I got AIDS from you. Well, where did I get AIDS from? From eating monkeys. I don't eat monkeys. <laughs> You're either eating them or fucking them. I was eating them. <laughs> <laughs> but the greatest thing I learned when working for that AIDS charity was that this is the best leaflet in the world. Okay? This is a real flyer that came round, issued by the Terence Higgins Trust. Okay? It came round uh, the university I worked at in about 1989. Okay? And uh, it was aimed at the last demographic of gay men who still weren't taking precautions. They treated HIV like an occupational hazard and they were militant against the disease, but they wouldn't take precautions. So it's aimed at that last tiny demographic, so it's very hard hitting. The front cover is a bunch of bananas with the word fuck. I don't know why, I don't. <laughs> and it's basically a 10 point plan of uh, health advice to not contract HIV. And this is, the, this is the title of this flyer. You know it's going to be good when this is the title. Okay, ready? You know, you don't always have to have anal sex. <laughs> it's good to know, isn't it? <laughs> Think of an old couple in a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> Just looking through Reader's <laughs> Digest and she goes, oh, what's this? <laughs> you know, you don't always have to have anal sex. <laughs> See, I fucking told you. <laughs> Okay, and it's uh, basically ten suggestions of, uh, of alternatives to that little act. Okay? I'll just read some to you. Number one. <laughs> okay, this is real. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Why not? Always starts the same. Why not? Okay. It's a soft sell. They're not pushing it on you, but... Okay. Soft sell. <laughs> Number one. Why not just jack each other off? <laughs> Look at that. I've got the new flyer, Larry. Do you expect me to post this on YouTube? You think YouTube's gonna let this shit fly? <laughs> oh, man. What does it say? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Let's, let's do one now. Okay. <laughs> no more up the arse for us. Number one. Why not just jack each other off? All right. Oh. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Always starts the same. Why not? Right. Number two. Why not just come on his back? <laughs> it's the casual nature of it. Like, like it's a recipe. Why not just throw in an onion? <laughs> <laughs> Why 
would you go to the doctor? Hi, doctor, I'm a gay man. I'm in a relationship, but I'm worried about the threat of HIV. Is there anything I can do? Um, oh, just come on his back. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> why he did a paid for donation because you know this video ain't gonna make it. <laughs> it's so wrong, dude. Number three. Number three. Oh. So I used to read this out to everyone I met, and they'd be laughing at number one and two. I'll get number three, I'd go, hey, ew. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Why not just come in his hair? Not the hair. Not the hair. On the back, sure. <laughs> On the, the back, go on. The, why is it even a recommendation? What? What? <laughs> That's a turn on. <laughs> Your hair. Oh, on the back. Go on the back. Where are you fucking aiming that? No. <laughs> Not on the hair. No. No. There. There. I don't trust you. I'm putting on a shower cap. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> not the hair. Number four. Oh, okay. I have not before or since heard such great use of the term EG as in this next sentence. Oh. Number four. Why not try? Try. So that people can think this is a bit difficult. Like, just please have a go. Okay. <laughs> This isn't brain surgery, this next one, but they put in try, okay? Why not... <laughs> Why not try coming into some fruit? What? E.g. watermelon. <laughs> like, they put that out without that bit. People were going, well, what fruit? Oh, not a pineapple. Fucking out. Oh, fucking out. Oh, what fruit? Just a... Just be, uh, need to be specific. We thought asses were all right. They're not. What fruit? Watermelon. Thank you. What is happening right now? What am I spending 35 minutes watching? <laughs> <laughs> a watermelon? Alright, is he the, oh, of course not a pineapple. And on and on. Okay. I want to just skip ahead to number 10, okay? <laughs> All right. Because this may be the greatest sentence ever written. <laughs> I'm including <laughs> Shakespeare in this. Dickens. <laughs> The office. Number bitch. <laughs> and you guys made a comment too to me like, oh, you know him from the office. No, I don't. I didn't see that here in the United States. First off, I don't I didn't watch The Office, to be honest with you. I think I watched like a few episodes here and there, but you know, like let's just say I've I've had relationships, all right? Um, uh, not long term ones and I whoever I was with would be interested in how to watch. There were some funny moments. I just, I couldn't sit down ever. I don't have much time to watch TV, but I didn't know he was a creator of the original The Office until you guys told me. Um, I don't know if he sold it or whatever the case is, but yeah, he was a creator of it. I totally get it. I understand now, but and I said, I seen his face somewhere. It must've been like in passing. Maybe I seen like a pet scrolling through Netflix or something, but yeah. That was good. That was good. Thank you. Say it again. Say it again. Dickens. The Office. Number... <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready for this? Number 10. Okay. Now, I think the bloke writing these was struggling by now. <laughs> I think he'd gone into his boss and said, I've done it. I've come up with nine. The boss went, oh, we need 10. <laughs> really? Yeah, we need ten. Uh, I've, I've got nine. Uh, we, we, we need ten, really. I'm, I'm coming in hair and fruit and everything. I, <laughs> I mean, it's... We need ten. We need, need two roads of five. <laughs> which... We need two roads of five, definitely. It's the, it's the symmetry I like. <laughs> Just come up with another one. You've got half an hour. We go to print, you've got, come on, oh. So he went back in and he came up with number 10 at one minute to six, I think. Okay, mm -hmm. number 10. 
Mm. Still with a why not. Okay. Number 10. Absolutely real. Ready? <laughs> why not both come out of a window? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even say if it's a first floor window. It's. It, it, morning. What if somebody's yawning and this. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, this is number 17, number 19's town. Thank you. Morning. That's why it's my favourite leaflet of all time. Uh, Thank you. Oh. Uh, that was good. Unfortunately, this is the end of part one. This is part one. I gotta break these up. Oh, do my ears are sweating. Are my ears beat red right now? I can't see. Oh, yeah, they are. Dude, so much blood has rushed to my face right now. <laughs> oh, dude, this is good. Yeah, so I just did 33 minutes right there. So 3312, I'll remember that marker. Come back for part two. No pun intended. All right. I'm coming off. God, I'm using that word right now. We just got done with part one. I will link part two down below uh, if you're watching the part one version now. Part two, I'll also link part one. I'll, I'll link all of them together once they're done. So, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously going to do this in like three parts or two parts here. So, I'll do the next one for another 30 minutes, and then I'll do the last one for like 15 minutes. But thank you so much for watching the first one with me, guys. Uh, I appreciate the donation request. I got this covered. And as long as YouTube gives me no issues, we should be fine. I'll post this on Patreon with no issues at all. That'll be fine. But uh, anybody here, first off, I have a lot of things I want to say, but it's a long fucking video. I'll save it for the end of the special. Anybody, I'm going to save the end of each video, though. I can't fucking talk, man. <laughs> anybody dealing with anxiety, depression, panic attacks, PTSD, addiction, uh, bad breakups, whatever the case may be. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me 24-7, man. I would not have this channel if it wasn't for you or amazing artists like Ricky Gervais. Um, thank you so much. Um, if you want more Ricky Gervais, you know what to do. Just keep subscribing. I'm going to do this entire special. I want to do more like this as well. I'm going to cover uh, some of his longer content. I just had to break it up into pieces. And as long as YouTube doesn't give me uh, any issues, we'll be fine. And I'll be posting it on Patreon as well. Um, I'd love to have you. If you're uncomfortable reaching out to me on Instagram, please message or please join discord amazing community amazing people in there that'll back you up we have mental health forums we got people in there sharing jokes it's a great place to be i'm hurt sorry more than welcome to join it's free as well uh like i said patreon this is also going on patreon this is for people who uh support the channel uh and want to pay you know just to help out a little bit and do pay for donations and stuff like that just like this one so thank you so much i love you i appreciate you on to the next one follow me to part two and I can't wait to see where this goes. If this was just him warming up, <laughs> out the window one, I was just thinking, like, what if somebody's walking by and just yawns and two people are just, I can't say it. YouTube's going to come after me, but he can say whatever he wants. I love you guys. I'm out. <laughs> Follow me to the next one.